Hi, everyone, and welcome to Chat with Changemakers. I'm your new host, Enrique, and I am a 10th grader in Florida and chapter president of Chef Junior, which is the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. I'm really excited to host the sixth season of Chat with Changemakers. Each month, I will welcome a different guest from the engineering community. Today, I'm chatting with Maddie, an engineer and program manager at Discover E, the organization behind Chat with Changemakers. Maddie, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Enrique. Thank you so much for having me, and congrats on being the new Chats host. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's get started. So, Maddie, the first question that I have to you is, can you tell us about your current role at Discovery E? Sure. So I am the program manager of Future City High School, which is a new program at Discover E. It's currently in its second year after a very successful pilot year last year. Um, so Future City as a concept is where students really become the engineers. So teams in middle school and high school will build a city 100 years in the future that solves the annual sustainability problem that we give them. This year, that challenge is above the current where teams will build a floating city that keeps their citizens healthy and safe. So teams will research and write an essay. Middle school teams will build a physical tabletop model and high school teams will build a digital model in Revit. So I work really closely with the teams and the coaches to under to make sure that they understand the rules and the process throughout the season. Um, I also hold monthly coaches calls where me and the coaches cover various topics throughout the season. Um, and I also make sure that the high school students really have ample op opportunities um, to learn more about engineering and get um, technical knowledge. So we're really excited to have a mentor panel this year where it's several, several STEM professionals that will provide their technical guidance and their engineering career insights. And we also have other webinars and opportunities throughout the season um, to really help these high school teams succeed. So it's going to be really exciting. Wow, that sounds super exciting. <laughs> so my next question is, what drew you to this opportunity to launch an engineering program for high school students? Yeah, so my um, major in college was actually chemical engineering, and I worked for five years as an engineer in a pharmaceutical company, um, but I knew that I wanted to make this shift into the nonprofit world. Um, I came across Discover E in my search, and Discover E and the Future City program just really seemed like the perfect blend of engineering education and, edu and engineering advocacy that I'm really passionate about. Um, all while being a nonprofit that is holding a commitment to improve the, the, the lives around us and the lives of the next generation. Um, so I've been here almost a year now, and it's been great so far. Yeah, I can't agree with you more. <laughs> so my next question is, how, how did you decide you wanted to pursue engineering? Like, what inspired you in college? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so long ago, when I was really young, um, my aunt, who is an engineer, um, planted the idea of having uh, be being an engineer um, in my mind. Um, and I didn't really understand what an engineer was back then. And um, so just kept going through school. And I just really loved chemistry and physics and math. And um, my first engineering experience um, was when I was looking at colleges. And the college that I ultimately ended up going to held a girls engineering day. Um, so you got to meet your prof your potential professors, um, other girls that were interested in engineering, and you did these mini engineering labs um, that went through the different disciplines of engineering. So it was really my first experience with engineering, and it was really awesome. And it just really taught me that engineering was something that I wanted to pursue and that, you know, as a girl, that I could do it. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, can you please provide an overview of your first job uh, out of college at Balsers and your role in the company? Yeah. So as I said, I was a validation engineer um, for five years at a pharmaceutical company. Um, validation engineers do quite a lot of things, um, especially in pharmaceuticals. Uh, but what I was mainly focused on was drafting and executing different documents um, for installation verification and operational testing of process equipment that will eventually be used for manufacturing. Wow, that so, sounds, sounds super interesting. Yeah, I can go into it a little bit more. So installation okay. verification is really verifying that all the valves and the piping and the tanks are in the right space and in the right place within the, the, the equipment and the right specification. Um, so you would walk down the system using a PNID, which is a piping and interpretation diagram. Um, and then my favorite part was the operational testing, actually. So um, there's multiple uh, different testing that you can do. And as a validation engineer, you know, you pre-test and you test this process equipment before it goes to manufacturing. So it's a lot of testing. Um, so some of the, the examples that I can give is like a pressure hold test. So you would isolate part of the system or the entire system, raise the pressure and see if you have any leaks over time or any, you know, um, loss of pressure over time. And that would tell you if you have any leaks. Um, something else we did was like a clean in place or a steam in place test. 
Now clean in place, you would introduce WIFI, which is water for injection, which is just really, really clean water. Um, and then steam is steam. And so um, these tests really just ensure that the inside of the equipment and the system can be cleaned and sanitized um, between the batches of product to ensure that there's um, very minimal or no contamination between batches. Um, so as a validation engineer, there's a lot of collaboration between other engineers on the team with the client. Um, quality definitely played a big role in it. Um, and just the different departments that on uh, whatever project you're on. Oh, that's very interesting. I've always asked myself, like, who does that type of work? And, and now I know it's a validation engineer. There you go. Yep. So, yeah. So my next question is, what is the most challenging project that you worked on and why did it, why was it challenging? Yeah. Um, so I think with the nature of just being a validation engineer and um, working on the type of uh, client that I was working with, um, you're you're going to be on a different project every couple of years, if not less than that. Um, so when you move to a new project, you know, you're not only being trying to be, become acclimated to the new process equipment um, that you would eventually be doing all that verification and testing on, um, but you're in a totally different environment. You know, we were in a different building on a different side of the campus. Um, and you're meeting a whole new um, you know, team of people that you're going to have to work and collaborate with. Um, so it, it maybe not is challenging um, and it could be really exciting, but it was just that period of adjustment um, that you have to work through uh, when you go on to a new project where you have to really you know, know how to navigate, how to work with these people the, in the best way yeah. um, and how to navigate the new style of project management that's going to come with it, too. Yeah, I, I can agree with you more. Team working is definitely a key part of engineering and you always definitely. have to be in a group for everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so in, in what ways do you think your job encourages you to be a change maker? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I really think, you know, opportunities like this, being uh, a guest on Chats with Changemakers is really amazing. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Um, and also, I think just being able to mold that Future City High School season, especially in its early years, in a way that gives the most opportunities to the high school students to really set them up for success, um, not only for the Future City program, but for their um engineering education if or their STEM education um, and to be successful in the engineering workforce. Yeah, totally. So what is one future trend or development in your field that, that just excites you? Yeah. Um, so for some context here, uh, I'm actually on my borough's council. I'm a council member on my borough. And uh, so a trend that I'm really seeing and excited for is just the use of more green infrastructure. Okay. So the use of green roofs and rain gardens and permeable pavements that you know I'm seeing in my area and my surrounding area that really helps with stormwater runoff and uh, keeps your cities cooler and improves the air quality. Um, so you know these these solutions really make your urban areas more uh, sustainable and more resilient. And so um, I'm really excited about that. And it's something that our our teams in for Future City even tackle as they work to design their future city. Yeah, yeah, we definitely need that, need that down here in Florida. It's very, it's very hot. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so, yeah, so what changes uh, would you – here, let me switch the question real quick. Okay, so did you have any mentors uh, who inspired you to pursue the path you're on today? Yeah, so um, when I went through college, you know, I, I joined several clubs and organizations that I think really set me up to be successful and to become an engineering professional. Um, I joined um, the chemistry club and – um, the a professional chemistry fraternity, and I eventually became the president of both of those um, entities. And so the professors that were involved with both of those clubs and organizations um, really just took me under their wing and helped me through that process of rising through the ranks and and really helping me hone those leadership skills and and um, uh, just really helping me uh, hone those like professional networking skills too. Yeah, perfect. So in thinking of the students joining us today and in the future of them. What is one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? Yeah, um, I think about this all the time. Um, I think I would tell myself that um, just to be unapologetically passionate about the things that you like and the things that you're interested in and don't be afraid of failing. Yeah, correct. I, I can't I can't agree with you. It's you can't be scared of failing because if you're scared of failing, then you you won't be better from those mistakes that you did. Exactly. You won't even start. So, so, yeah. So what is one skill that technicians and engineers of the future should start developing now? Yeah, that's a great question. I think being able to communicate with multiple levels of personnel is really important. Um, you know, you might know all the technical terms that go into a certain project or process that you're a part of, um, but you need to be able to explain that 
into to, to everybody in the room, right? You're going to have quality there. You're going to have other engineers there. You're going to have, you know, maybe your manager or your CEO, maybe, you don't know, or maybe even a trainee, especially. So just being able to bring it to their level of knowledge and exposure on that project. Yeah, it's like what we were talking about before about working in a team, being able to, you know, that communication aspect that we were talking about Exactly. before. So, yeah, so what are the top three things people should know about Future City for middle school and high school? Yeah, great. So uh, for Future City, really, anybody can participate. It's just like engineering. Engineering is open to everybody, and so is Future City. Um, you know, it, it also has something for everybody. You know, there's writing involved, there's designing, researching, collaborating in a team, working critically, uh, thinking critically, sustainability issues, project management. There's so much more that goes into Future City that somebody is going to like some aspect of it and some and get some something out of it. That's one. That's Um, Yeah. two, I would say that Future City High School is still a new program, right? We're in our second year. Um, and so we're still learning as the teams went through last season and are going through this season as well. So we're constantly looking for feedback from our teams. Um, and the feedback that we got from last year, we immediately implemented this year.
Okay. Right. I've always since middle school been very interested in agriculture and in plants and such and such and, and other things, right? And uh the past weekend I went to my local youth fair and I participated uh in helping out some internship uh some friends of mine that did an internship at a at a garden and it was just super interesting and I don't know, I'm still deciding, but it's be definitely engineering of course in a STEM related career and it's between computer engineering and biological engineering. That's great. You sound really passionate about it. Of course. Um, my last question is, what do you like to do in your spare time? Yeah, so in my spare time, I have a 3D printer at home, right? And I, uh, and our school provides a Fusion 360 to each student who's taking the engineering classes. So I like just fixing things around my house, right? So wow. example, my mom had a cabinet that was broken because one of the, uh, like, the latches wasn't working. And I was like, I took off the other latch of the other side. I 3D modeled it and then I 3D printed it and I and I made it work. So that mm-hmm. that was that was perfect. That's that's something I like to do in my spare time: 3D printing and 3D modeling. That's so cool. Well, thank you, Enrique. That was all the questions I had. Yeah. Well, I believe that's all the questions for that we have time for today. Thank you, Maddie, once again for joining us today. I learned a lot about you. Thank you so much, Enrique, and good luck hosting this season. Thank you. Thank you. And a huge thanks to all of you for tuning in tuning in to learn more about engineering careers go to discover engineering's website at discovery.org and see you next time